I have a good woman I ain't good looking But I do some cooking I'm the old fat guy So use that oven If you want some loving Be like the old fat guy Like the old fat guy. Welcome to another edition of You Can Make It With The Fat Old Guy. Today is Boxing Day at Passing Wind Estates, and I found out I was out of hot dog buns. What a horrible state of affairs. How can you have a good bratwurst or hot link, or, or even a, just a plain old hot dog, without a great hot dog bun? So I had to get work and make some. Now, the kind of hot dog buns I make are called New England hot dog buns, and they're different from the regular ones in that they're tall and slender, and they're meant to be sliced down from the top. They're actually older than regular hot dog buns. Back in the 40s in New England, a hotel wanted a bun that wouldn't fall over for their clam strips, so a local baker made tall, thin buns with straight sides that could be cut from the top. It wasn't until the 50s the old side-cut hot dog buns came in, and for some reason they become more popular. I find they don't hold as much and they're harder to use, so I make New England hot dog buns. The problem is that you normally need a special pan to make them, to get those straight sides. And who wants to buy one pan just to make hot dog buns? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make New England-style hot dog buns in an 8 by 8 inch square cake pan. We'll start off with our regular first ingredient, copious quantities of wine taken internally. Ah, and then we'll get on to making New England hot dogs. We're going to begin by putting some flour in a mixing bowl. I usually measure my flour by weight because it's much more accurate. I'll be using 90 grams or 3 ounces of all-purpose flour. If you don't have a scale, that's 175 milliliters or three quarters of a cup. I will add to that 25 milliliters or two tablespoons sugar, one packet of rapid rise yeast, which is two and a quarter teaspoons or 12 milliliters, and three milliliters or one half teaspoon salt. I'll mix those together. In a microwave safe bowl, I mix together 125 milliliters or one half cup of milk, 50 milliliters one quarter cup of water, and then added to that 25 milliliters or two tablespoons of butter. I put the bowl of liquids and butter in a microwave and microwaved on high at 30 second intervals until it was warm but not hot. That's about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I put the mixing bowl with the flour mixture in it on my stand mixer. I attached the paddle to the mixer and added the liquid ingredients to the flour mixture and beat on medium speed for two minutes. After the ingredients had mixed for two minutes on the stand mixer, I changed from the paddle to the dough hook. I added an additional 150 grams or five and one-third ounces of all-purpose flour. If you do not have a scale that is 300 milliliters or one and one-quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I ran the dough hook for just a minute or two until a ball started to form around the bottom of the hook. Then I continued to run the dough hook for seven minutes. I covered the bowl with a dry towel and let it sit for 10 minutes. I turned the dough out onto a floured surface and cut the dough into four pieces. 
I then cut each of those four pieces into four more pieces to make 16 pieces in total. I took three balls and rolled them together into about a six inch long log shape. I did this until I had five logs and one ball left over. I sprayed an 8 inch square pan with baking spray and then I put four of the logs side by side along the bottom of the pan. I put the fifth log along top of the three of them and the ball in the top empty corner. I covered the pan with a towel and put it in a warm place for 30 to 40 minutes until the dough had doubled in size. I baked the buns for 20 minutes at 375 degrees and then took them out and left them in the pan on a rack to cool for 10 minutes. I turned the buns out of the pan and separated them to finish cooling. Now that the buns are done, you can note that they have nice straight sides and they're a good shape. They'll be easy to cut from the top and easy to grill on a barbecue to get toast marks on each side. However, the shape isn't the most important part of the bun, it's the taste and the texture. This is the little bun that we have left over. You'll note the texture is nice and soft and moist and let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Soft and moist with a nice yeast taste, excellent texture, and a little bit of bite in the crust. You'll have to excuse me, but this is a great New England hot dog bun, if I do say so myself. The best part is you can make it. Now, excuse me, i got to go cook a bratwurst. Just a quick addendum. I really encourage you to toast the sides of these buns, or butter them and grill them on your barbecue when you're heating up a bratwurst or hot dog or whatever. When dinner time gets in, and your wife has made it clear, it's your turn to cook, my dear. You have no need to fear. Make the dinner feature your spouse, bring peace into your house, you can make it. If you're lucky, she will say, and life will be okay, life will be okay. You can make it.